really big prints from an iPhone. Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday, number 125. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Couple things that I'm gonna go over today. First is I wanted to do some tests on how big I can make a print from my iPhone. I've already done a couple of five by sevens, which of course, as you would expect, look awesome. So does an eight by eight print. Why did I print it eight by eight? Because it needed it, it needed that crop. It just does not look good because there's a lot more on the bottom. The person actually shot it vertical with my phone. I would have done it horizontally, but that was me. Anyway, um, did uh, I wanted to be in the photo, so <laughs> it kind of needed to be cropped uh, vertically. So we're going to be printing some square images today. Does not impact our tests at all. So first thing is uh, these look great, of course, as you would expect. Um, no issues there. Perfectly sharp. You know, they look great. Done. So smaller prints, of course, are going to look fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually print one here, uh, 17 by, how's that? Oh, 16 by 16 print is what I'm going to do here uh, on the P800. So I have the printer set up already for 17 by 22 inch paper, and I actually don't need borderless, luster color quality. Okay, that's good. So let's go ahead and print that and run that off. And while that is printing, I thought I would talk a little bit about Lightroom print templates. Now, there are a ton of them out there. You can get them from all different sources. There are free ones, there are paid ones. Uh, you can, they're everywhere. Just do a Google search and you'll come up with a bunch of them. But the problem is, is that they're not going to work with most of your printers perfectly. There's going to be a lot of issues. And so what I wanted to do was to show you how to make your own set of templates and get your own set going, your own creative templates, basically allow you to set, your, set up your own collages that you, all you need to do is just drag and drop images right into the, the, the layout right inside of uh, Lightroom and you're done. So well, here's what our final result is going to look like and I'm going to show you how to make this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six images here and a black background. Did this all inside of Lightroom. I can edit each individual file, which is really nice to be able to go back and, and re-edit, retouch, change some stuff around. Pretty cool. So pretty darn easy for us to do that. And you know, before I do any farther, I'm going to save that. So how do we do this? First, we need to set up our paper size. So I have this at 20 by 30, and this is where you need to choose your printer first, all right? Choose your printer, choose your paper style. You need to then type in your, your size, your paper size. You're actually gonna want it uh, of the, the final output paper. Now, if you're like on my printer, it is 24 inches wide. I would actually need to go with the 24 by 30 size. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to do that for right now. Anyway, uh, set up that 24 by 30 size and then click OK. And I want it to be in portrait, borderless paper, all that st stuff is right. So let's clear all of this off of here. And let's turn off my background color. Now we have a clean slate. So the first thing I would suggest doing is coming up here to view and turn on show guides, show you your rulers on the left and on the right, and then you will be able to get started. Turn on my images down here at the bottom and my layout style. The first thing that we need to choose is custom package up here at the top. Got to start there. Then uh, check our image settings, rotate to fit. We want that turned off. You may or may not want a photo border or a stroke on them. That's totally up to you design wise. You can make those choices for yourself. So now we're going to turn on grid snap, which is a good thing. That means that they will kind of jump around so that they stay together. And so to make it easier to align everything. 
And let's see, rulers, page bleed, we don't need that. Grid, there's another way to turn on the grid right there if you wanted to, to turn that on and off. So, now we come down here to cells. So we said we had six images. All right, so we had our one big image and then we had our uh, smaller ones, one, two, three, and then we had two bigger ones down towards the bottom and they were down here. Now your layout's probably gonna change and it's gonna vary a lot and that's okay. That's a good thing for it to change and you'd be totally honest, this thing is probably gonna come out completely different than the way that I did it before because I don't have a reference. I'm not, I don't have like a reference or anything on another screen. It's probably gonna look different. <laughs> so that's uh, actually kind of a good thing just to see what's gonna happen. Um, the layout I do have in my head, but that's it. I wanted these to be relatively square, but the sizing, I don't know. There's going to be some stuff that's going to be different, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Anyway. So, go along. I'm going to arrange all these to about where I want them. I know I want that to be my big picture. And I know I want the kids up here. Actually, I think I'll use that photo. And then where's the other one? That one. Okay, so we have the three of them. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? That's what I did. I did want these to be more square. And it kinda, I get to go right here and it snaps to be the same size. Okay. So that's what I'll do. I'll zoom in on that. That makes it better. All right. And then I had mom and dad down here. Where'd you go? That one. And I had that one. There we go. So that's my layout looking pretty good. Uh, I could maybe crop them a little bit closer to help. Uh, like this one's just a little bit off center. We can adjust that, but it's looking pretty good. So let's turn off up here to view, turn off our guides. And so we're looking really good. Before we go any farther though, let's save our work in case we mess something up. I'm gonna come up here and click on this plus button and we're gonna make, call this one 20 by 30 collage version two. Since I can't name it the same, it would overwrite it. So, and then we'll choose our folder. If you don't already have a folder, you can hit new folder right here and it'll create a new one. I'm gonna hit create and there we are. So now I'm going to add my page background color here under page. Now again, you can choose whatever color that you want. Uh, that really looks ugly, but that's okay because we can always go back and, and choose it and change it. Uh, for this particular project, I'm gonna go with a black because my walls are gray and I think that's gonna be a better way to go. I'm actually gonna print this on a fabric material and stick it back here, right there on the wall. That, so when my screen is closed, then you'll still be able to see it, which is uh, pretty cool. And so that's where I'm gonna be putting it. So I needed something to fill that spot. So that's what's gonna, where this thing is gonna end up going. That's where I got my dimensions, all that good stuff. So I don't want it to compete with the gray color. That's why I'm gonna go with this black. It might also be nice to add my logo to this image. So what I'm gonna do is choose my identity plate. By the way, after a little bit of research here, I actually found out that there's only one way to actually make this work with a transparent PNG, and that's through the identity plate. Adding another layer and a th or adding another cell will not allow this to work, unfortunately. So there we are, we have that. We actually need to change that because I want a black and white version of this, not the color one. The color one just ruins the black and white of the whole thing. So I'm going to make a new one. So let's do main, I, oops, I want to there, and then I want to edit. All right, so I've chosen my file, and then I am gonna click on okay, and there we go. So now I have that different file that I can resize and place wherever I want. Now, that's just an idea. 
you might want to, maybe you have a different signature, a different style logo, a different something, you know, maybe it would look better if it was up in here. Uh, obviously that doesn't work very well. Maybe you have different artwork that you want to use, semi-transparent, you could do all kinds of stuff, make your own inside of Photoshop. For this particular image, if I was going to do it, I'd probably put it down here nice and small and it'll be out of the way. But I'm actually not going to do it because I'm going to be printing it and just putting it here in the studio. So that's it. So um, we can then right click and do update with current settings in order to save that. And then we come down here and we choose printer and we'd be able to print it. Choose the right profile, make sure we have the right media type, all that good stuff. And actually, if you are printing with an Epson printer, you want to set this to 270 PPI. If you do not have a printer or you can't print it big enough, that kind of thing, you just choose JPEG file. Choose 300 PPI is good. And then JPEG quality, standard, media type is mad, it's fine. Custom file dimensions, basically set it to the size print that you want. Choose your, pay, your uh, color profile. Make sure it's the right profile, either R sRGB or Adobe 98. Uh, check with your printing company to make sure they can handle one of those. Never send anything with a uh, tagged with a printer profile or with Profoto RGB unless specifically requested because they usually end up screwing it up and the colors look wrong. So uh, choose that sRGB or Adobe 98 and then you hit print to file and hit save and it will export and you'll have a full size file that you can then have printed. So that is it. This is really easy. You can make your own layouts, your own designs, drop in different images, play with some stuff, uh, do your own layouts. You know, maybe you wanted to have, you know, the smaller, this probably won't look very good, but just as an example, you could move, uh, you know, these three photos down here. If you wanted, you know, move the client, wanted something a little bit different. So this is a great way to do a quick layout. It's a lot nicer, it's a lot easier than working inside of Photoshop when doing these kinds of collages. And our print is done. This was printed from the an iPhone. And again, that looks pretty darn good. You, your normal viewing distance on a print this size is probably gonna be at least a foot. And you start putting them side by side like this and you're really not gonna see any discernible quality loss at all. Um, obviously, if it was shot with a DSLR, the color might be a little bit better. Um, you know, the reds in this particular image are not the greatest. I don't know why. Like the reds in the flag, um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just the just the way the iPhone reproduces it. I've noticed that a couple of times that it reds in the you know, from the iPhone are not as good as reds from my DSLRs, but it's to be expected with such a small sensor. So uh, other than that, the, the actual print there is looking pretty darn good. So that's that one. There it is. It just finished coming out of the printer. So we have our 8x8, we have our 5x7s, we have our 16x16 inch print, which is really nice. Sky looks awesome. Everything looks great there. But how good does this really big 24 inch print look? Is there any discernible quality loss that you can really see? And once again, this is being really nitpicky. Let me say this before I go into this. You are not going to look at this print way up close like this. It just does not happen. You are when you look at a big print, especially if it's hanging over top of your couch or, you know, if it's, if it's at a distance, a large print is meant to be viewed at a distance. It is not meant to be viewed way up close like this. So even when I get it to here at arm's length, which is probably about the closest you're going to view a big print like this, I cannot see any issues at all. I cannot see any pixelation, anything like that in the print. Once I get it up close, yes, I do start to see a little bit of pixelation, but that's not what this is about. This is about viewing it and seeing it at a distance. 
and you cannot see any of that that you know obviously it was a, a nice day out so there's no noise it was you know in the middle of the day anything like that but you don't see any of that the the weird pixels or you know pixelation anything like that or noise or anything like that when you see it when you look at it at a normal viewing distance so yes we can make really huge nice prints from our iphone and they turn out really well so get your photos printed whether you're doing it at home whether you're sending it out do something with them whether you have a big printer whether you know someone with a big printer get them printed do something with them get them out of your computer get them hung up on the wall they look much better on your walls and so does your home looks better decorated with big photos so get your stuff printed uh, any questions or anything i would love to hear them thanks guys keep shooting